What is going on? My name is Taylor, and this podcast is called Who Knows, a podcast that works to answer the simply complicated questions of life and promote a life of self-love, mental health, and creating your own normal. Don't worry, we are just as lost as you are. What is up, my cats and kittens? I feel like that's someone else's intro to something, but I wanted to say it, so here we are. Listen, I'm going straight into it. That new Bo Burnham special has me feeling all the feels right now. Have you watched it? Have you watched it? Have you seen it? I really, really love all of the music in it, and I'm so glad that he put that album out on Spotify. If you are here for my Instagram, you might have seen me talking about that recently, and it's my favorite thing ever. Um, The thing I love the most about it, besides the music, is how much it's about mental health in every form and just the satirized reality of how wild things have been for so many of us in the last year. And I mean, kind of even before that as well, I feel like a lot of those feelings are ones that we haven't been talking about and we have been feeling. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just love it, and it makes me happy, but also makes me sad, which is hard because I want to listen to it and watch it all the time, but I also kind of feel like I'm in a funk when I'm watching it, but I think that's just because I have a lot of things that I'm working through within myself at the moment. The biggest one right now is like, is any of this actually working, or is it worth it, and am I even doing a good job with what I'm doing? What classifies as a good job? What is success? What is reaching people? How many people do you have to reach to be reaching people? And do I even matter? And I know I say all the time that we do, and I do believe most days and in most ways that I do matter, and everyone matters, but I guess you could say I'm feeling like I'm in a little bit of an existential crisis right now. Yay! (laughs) Uh, But I feel just like... I really love the stuff that I'm doing and I don't want to give up on it. I want to keep trying. I want to figure out what my purpose is and what makes me feel successful. And I think I need to just really investigate defining that for myself. It's tough. So much back and forth in my mind right now, but I'm okay. I'm doing it. I'm here and I'm showing up. And I think showing up is the first step. And I'm glad you showed up too. And we're showing up together and... You know, I guess it'd be kind of boring if I figured it all out and then just kind of sat here. So it's a mystery and I'm here to solve it, I guess. (laughs) So as I've been doing this season, I want to give a few shout outs to a few more of our star studded Indiegogo contributors, those lovely individuals from all over the world who are making this season possible and have helped launch, who knows, into its bright new future. Bright? new future. They are stars after all. Uh, Today, I want to give a shout out to Lucy B, Randy D, Salvatore B, and RJS. A thousand million billion trillion stars in the sky to say thank you today and every single day. You are making my dreams come true and I'm so, so grateful for it. All right, it is time for our topic breakdown, where we hear from the mind of a mental health professional about the subject of this week's episode. To fully understand the emotions behind any subject, I think it's important to consult the professionals. While conversations like the ones on our show are valuable and important in so many ways, to gain the best insight on mental health, therapists are here to help. Our topic for this episode is self-expression in every form and how it feels to just be yourself. This is something I have a really complicated relationship with and definitely feeds into a lot of how I'm feeling right now. Um, I feel like I'm either too afraid to be myself or regretting a moment where I chose to be or not to be myself. From clothing to the things I enjoy to how I speak and act, I always feel like I have to apologize for who I am and I really don't like it and I feel like I have to make myself smaller for the comfort of others 
I would say that all this got really bad for me when I left college to go out into my career for the first time. I felt like I had to be like an adult da, 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 in a way that would make people want to be around me or want to hire me. It was all about appearances. Um, everywhere I went, I noticed that even though, you know, we were nice, nicey nice in face to face, there was a lot of toxic conversation happening about other people behind their backs. And I didn't want to be that person. So I became super obsessed with making sure everyone liked me while also feeling super sad from forcing myself to be someone that I wasn't. And I've had many days of emotional tug of war over wanting to be liked and wanting to be myself. But I'm finally beginning to face some of the fears and explore what it's like to be myself for the first first time and like really just put being myself first and have the people around me be there because they like me for who I am and not because of something that I put out there you know it's exhausting to feel like you have to hide yourself away from people just so they can like you like do I even need you to like me what's the point of having people like you if they don't like you you know what I'm saying so many questions on this subject, and I'm constantly asking myself them every single day. And to dive into the inner workings of the importance of authentic self-expression in every form, I would like to hand the mic over to Jessica Sheriff, our resident therapist and mental health consultant, to help us break down the topic of self-expression. Self-expression, yes. I love this topic so much. As someone who has personally struggled with mental illness, Self-expression is one of the most powerful and accessible resources for healing because the most valuable and essential component is simply you. Throughout history, people have used visual art, storytelling, movement, dance, and chanting as healing rituals for individuals and communities. This has led to the indisputable connection between arts and health in our present day and a field of study that continues to be explored and researched. In general, self-expression reduces stress and anxiety and helps us better understand and process our emotions, which positively affects our mood, function, cognition, and behavior. Because art comes from a deep emotional place inside of us, creative endeavors enable us to undergo a profound process of self-discovery. In terms of a more formal therapeutic practice, Creative art therapy is a well-known approach utilizing expressive drawing and painting as a means of processing trauma and grief. Now, while creative arts therapy typically focuses on one artistic modality at a time, expressive arts therapy is a newer multimodal approach that draws from a variety of art forms such as music, theater, poetry, dance, and expressive writing as means to exploring one's inner landscape. At the core of expressive arts therapy is the understanding that the more we view creativity as a wellness practice, the greater the emphasis on the process of creation as opposed to a finished or final product. Thus, your creative process becomes your road to emotional health. I know someone may hear this and think to themselves, well, what if I'm just not creative? And the truth is, creativity is our life force energy, and there is likely something you enjoy doing that makes you feel quite literally full of yourself. Think outside of traditional arts as we know them, and instead perhaps you enjoy baking or doing your makeup or riding a bike. All of these activities happen through our creative energy and can be directed at the art forms for a more therapeutic practice if desired. I personally enjoy expressive writing as a powerful tool for accessing my raw emotions, and I practice self-expression through fashion to help build my identity and learn to love myself more. Remember that self-expression is just as important as self-care, and if they are not intertwined in your lifestyle, try to make time to explore your emotions more intentionally and just see what happens. Without fail, Jessica always breathes new ideas into existence that I never even began to start to think about, about so many subjects. I love it so much. I'm so grateful for her. And this is just a small example of what an opportunity to speak with a therapist might be like. If you feel like you might benefit from talking to a mental health professional, don't be afraid to seek one out. They have dedicated their lives to helping you live yours in the best way possible. And there's a therapist out there for you right now, the right person is out there 
just got to look for them. Huge thank you, as always, to Jessica for breaking it down for us before we get started. I'm so excited and grateful to have her here all season long. Make sure you follow her over on Instagram at Jessica Sheriff. I'll have all her stuff linked in the show notes all season long. Every episode, it'll be there, along with some great resources for places you might find your own therapist. So this week, I hung out with Kyle Rowe, a different Kyle than the Kyle that I live with, a new Kyle, a new friend. This is a Kyle who is, in my humble opinion, a master of all things style, flair, and being just one of the coolest, most down-to-earth people I have ever ever had the pleasure of finding on the internet. They are also known as Leptocephalus on Instagram, sometimes the baby eel on their blog, but all the time known for their fashion, color, fun, and kindness that they share with the world through their love of so many things and through their offering of a place to share who you are, what you're going through, and what you love. They're originally from Saratoga Springs, New York, and are currently living in Orlando where they work as a stage technician at Universal Studios Florida. So excited to go and see them soon, hopefully. And today, Kyle and I are here to chat about self-expression in every form of the word, fashion, interests of every kind. There will be talk of Lady Gaga. (laughs) We both love Lady Gaga. As well as dancing in public, Disney, pickles, all the things that Kyle loves so much. And Kyle is sharing with the world and inspiring others like me to go out there and be themselves wholly and unapologetically loving what you love. I'm so grateful for all that Kyle does to remind everyone that expressing yourself in the way that feels most authentically you is the best way to be. So here's Kyle Rowe and I talking about self-expression. I just wanted to give a quick trigger warning for a brief conversation about death and loss. It is brief, but we care most of all about you taking care of yourself. So please make sure you do that over anything else. We love you and your mental health is more important than any podcast episode. Kyle, I feel like we are already best friends to be honest (laughs) like we could have stopped at like the fact that we're both in the church of gaga essentially like we're literally like so in love well she's my mom yeah she's my mom too like literally i wore i wore this shirt for you today by the way yes oh my god yes i have my my rain on me shirt on guys with gaga and ariana grande i wish i had known i have a rain on me shirt also (laughs) i should have worn it (laughs) <laughs> the moment these came out, I was like, go. Gotta grab it. Gotta snatch it. Honestly, mine doesn't even fit me, but I I, I force it on. I'm like, I'm wearing this. Like, I'm like in a, a child in a giant coat. And you know what's really funny is this one is as big as it is so that me and my Kyle can share it. <laughs> yes. One of the reasons that I was so excited to talk to you is that for probably my entire life, I have struggled with clothing. Not, and there's twofold. Part of it is that I like am terrified to wear anything ever. And I also have OCD. And so I have like sensory issues where I like can't wear things that are too tight or this and this and that. But I mean, from an outside perspective, you seem to really have a really firm hold on so many things about who you are and you have this really amazing like vintage wardrobe and like you just kind of go for it with whatever you wear and I am always so terrified to wear whatever I want to wear for reasons that I don't understand Um, and the question I want to start with is just generally like where does your story begin with fashion and self-expression. Yeah, totally. Um, Well, I think I was thinking about this because I never really thought about it before. Um, But I think a lot of it actually comes from kind of being half raised by my grandparents, like because I lived very close to them growing up. So I would go over there all the time. Basically, I would spend half the week with my parents who were working full time at the same time. And then I would just be with them, my grandparents, the rest of the time. So I guess just growing up around older people, just made me like older things more. But also (laughs) thinking about um, this specifically self-expression, 
Um, my grandfather started a clown troupe, and I was also in that. Uh, and I think maybe that is probably where I started becoming really, really bold and not caring about other people anymore is when I was a teenager in a clown troupe. <laughs> Amazing is not even enough of the word to describe that. Like, I love that. So like, you know, you expect this person to be like, and I came into myself and I'm sure that you have those parts of it, but I love that we're starting with, I was a clown. Yeah. I just, I, honestly, I feel like that's where I, I really started not caring about what other people thought of me because I was like, I literally dress like a clown in my free time. So I don't care what you have to say. <laughs> So the clown troupe, it, it's it was it's a religious clown troupe. Uh, it's called the King's Clown Troupe, uh, and it it basically we would just do like an entire church service as clowns, as uh, like mimes, uh, and the, like through music and 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 mime and the storytelling was incredible. Uh, I'm not really a religious person, uh, and I never really was, but. It made my family happy, and so it was, you know, community, that whole thing, and I really enjoyed it, and it was, um, it was really fun, uh, but weird, <laughs> but definitely weird. The best kinds of things are fun and weird, you know? You know, you say the word clown, and people think, like, you know, like, something to make fun of, something silly. You chose to embrace the true sense of joy and color that comes with that as well like which I think is amazing how did that evolve into where you are now well so I was always obsessed with Disney but like I lived in New York honestly like the fact that I live in Florida now is so strange like so unbelievable because growing up you you never think that you can be anywhere else than where you are I never considered that I would move to Florida and and work at Disney or work at Universal but I definitely, like, dreamed of vacations all the time. And we went to Disney a bunch growing up. Um, obviously, like, the Cake Castle had a huge impact on my life. Same. Uh, and continues to, to this day. It's giant pink. It's, ugh, it's incredible. It's the best. It's so incredible. And the people that don't like it, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, you're wrong. They're wrong. It's, I'm sorry, but they are wrong. It's unfortunate. <laughs> And that again plays into the love of vi of things that are vintage because that's for, that was from the 25th anniversary and it's like they will never do anything like that again which you know is very sad. Yeah, unfortunately cuz cuz uh, cuz I've seen those decorations that they got going on right now and it is not that is not it. They're a mess. <laughs> Big Big thumbs down. They could have done a whole new cake is what I'm saying. Exactly. They could have done so much more and they chose to be understated, which of course, like someone like you is like, we're not going to choose to be understated. What does that even mean? Never. Exactly. Did you make your blog and your Instagram with the intent of being like, I'm going to show people who I am or like, is it truly just like I'm out here and like come hang if you want to. If you scroll back all the way in my Instagram, it basically starts when I started working at Disney in 2012. So I think the idea was, uh, hey, this social media platform just started. I'm moving away from my entire family and all of my friends. I'm going to get on Instagram. And it just kept going forever. And here we are. And I'm still on it. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's good. It's good. Yeah. And one of the other things I love that you do, aside from just sharing yourself dancing in public and eating pickles, which I love, you make a point to put in those little, those like little question boxes and ask people how they're doing. And you respond to, as far as I am aware, like every single one. Tell me about like what made you start doing that and like how like how it makes you feel that people are sharing that stuff with you well I think I started doing it um obviously in the past year like when everyone has just been home I mean not me I've been out I've been out in the soup but most people have been home and uh everyone's just lonely it's something that a lot of people were talking to me about and I was just like Tell me more. I, I, I just, I, I like to help. I like to hear how people are doing. I, I, if I can help, I will help. So I think it just, it makes people feel heard and like feel seen. And if I can help, I will. 
And sometimes, sometimes it's just being like, I see you and I hear you. And that's all people need, you know, just like everyone else. Like I, I feel sometimes I feel like totally isolated and I feel like, uh, no one understands me. And sometimes, you know, I have, I have super close family and friends and, a lovely husband and obviously people get me but sometimes I still feel alone and I think it's important to remind yourself that you're not you never are and no one is yeah it's an idea that feels like so simple when you say it that way and then on those hard days it's like impossible to convince yourself that you're not like completely isolated from the rest of the world in the way that you feel if you have days like that where you are feeling at your lowest like what are the things in your life that you enjoy that pull you out of that and that like remind you to keep going and to keep being yourself and to you know that you have something to say uh usually I just uh go outside (laughs) frankly I just stand in the sun (laughs) and I think a big part of living in Florida is because I had depression when I was younger and living in New York, it was dark a lot. And it's a big difference to me, the sun and going in the sun, watching trashy TV, you know, eating, like eating comfort food, not junk food, like comfort food is simple. It's just something simple that you can do. And a couple small, simple things can make all the difference, you know? Yeah, no, that is so true. It does. It is kind of wild how sometimes the simplest little thing that you can allow yourself to do, it just makes all the difference. Because again, like one of the biggest things that I am battling right now is this idea that I am not allowed to be who I want to be or do what I want to do, that there are rules with everything. And it is so crazy how just allowing yourself to say, I'm going to do that because I want to do that is like so life changing and profound and really does make you feel better. (laughs) Yeah. Like I know it sounds kind of silly, like to say it like that, to be like, I just go outside. But like, to me, sometimes it's that easy. Like, and it's just, it's just getting out of your own way. Like it's all about just being in your own head and, and, and getting, getting out of your own way. Like it's all, it's all up here. (laughs) that phrase getting out of your own way it can be that simple like I've started to do this thing where I say to myself I have a thing that I want to do and I'm like okay if I do this thing is it going to hurt or insult somebody in a way that is like discriminating against them or who they are as a person the answer if the answer is no to that great Next question will be, this is something that I want to do because it's going to make me happy. And and yes, if the answer is yes to that. Next question is, am I hurting myself by doing this thing? If the answer is no to that. The final question is, what is it that is making me not want to do this thing? And if the answer to that has anything to do with anyone other than myself... Like if it's like, oh, because my mom will be mad or, oh, because that friend that I have is going to judge me about like if those are the answers to those to that last question, that's me showing myself that I'm making that up. Like and, and it seems stupid to be like, oh, you're making that up because in your in that moment, it feels so real. It does. Well, because it's you and you like, you know, one cannot deny like the trauma of past experiences. This is something that. I express this sometimes to people and they're like, oh, well, that was a long time ago. I'm like, that's great. I don't, my brain doesn't care how long ago it was. It really hurt. And so I'm destroyed on the inside and like, you know, immobilized by these traumatic experiences because I fiercely love other people. But that fierce love for other people can sometimes turn into you standing in your own way of doing anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. All these things that you love and expressing them and sharing them with the world, how does that make you feel? If you could describe just going out there and being you, what does it feel like? Just happy. It makes me it makes me feel like fulfilled. I feel I feel the worst when I have to wear like a uniform or 
you know, safety shoes. I just feel all buttoned up on the inside. You know what I mean? When you are out like shopping and like finding the things that you want to wear, like how do you know when like something, you ever have that thing where you're like, if I don't buy this, I'm going to regret it because this is going to make me feel exactly how I want to feel. What is it like when you're like out there looking for things? And also like if you have any tips that you want to throw to people that are interested in, in vintage shopping, like tell me all about that because I feel like people think that the only like vintage shopping is like just going to Goodwill and like finding stuff at Goodwill, which there's a lot of cool stuff at Goodwill, but I feel like there's like an art to it that like I know I don't understand at all. So like I'm so curious to hear about about that from you yeah well so I, a lot of it is definitely going to goodwill uh and just like unfortunately looking at everything like it, i go to goodwill with like an hour of time like to spend there because i know i'm gonna be looking at every rack and just looking for for me just looking for like bright colors or bright prints half the time it ends up being like a pair of lularoe leggings so i just put those back on the rack but um yeah <laughs> Uh, but for like vintage, vintage, like when I'm looking for something specific, I usually go online, frankly, like I don't shop in stores at all. I mean, obviously right now, no one is shopping in stores. So it's like, I feel like more people are getting into online shopping, which is amazing. And so good because I feel like you can cater exactly. You, the internet will give you exactly what you want it if you ask it to. So like, I'll go to eBay and I'll say, I want a sixties psychedelic midi dress and it'll give it to me. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I guess I forget sometimes that you can just like go on like eBay is kind of like the goodwill of the internet. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. People forget about eBay because everyone goes on Etsy. And while Etsy is great, it is very pricey most of the time. But on eBay, it's just a lot of it is also like people like I go to estate sales and a lot of people that go to estate sales are just resellers and they do stuff like that. Like they'll just sell lots of clothes on eBay. And I will buy those lots and then just pick through what I want and sell what I don't. Well, I definitely am, like, so grateful that I have, like, followers that are interested in fashion and similar in fashion that I'm, that, that I like. But then we can share it. You know what I mean? And then a lot of people, like, I'll have people that buy it and then they'll send me a picture of them in it. And I feel so happy. Like, I feel like I've given the clothes another life. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, you get to see that person like wearing it and smiling and like that's and you like help them helped bring that joy to them. There's so many I feel like there's so many ways that you do that so well, like that you just like bring joy to people in so many different avenues. I love the day that you on your Instagram where you were like, which Lady Gaga outfit would you be? I still have all those pictures saved in my phone, by the way for that I was posting so I can just go back and look at them myself. I'm just like, let me just look through this album. This is healthy. This is fine. I mean, honestly, I think it is pretty healthy. Like there are a lot of things that you could do when you're like feeling down that are like not healthy for you. And I don't feel like looking at pictures of Lady Gaga is one of those things. I never like look at Lady Gaga and feel like, you know how there are some like people out there in the world, like celebrity wise that are that you look at them and you're like, now I feel bad about myself. I never feel like that with Lady Gaga. I never feel like she's trying to be better than me. She definitely has like an entire team of people that like help her be the queen that she is. Right, right. Right. But I feel like a lot of it is her. Yes. I was going to say at her core, like she is already that queen and they are just helping her make sure that, you know, like her intense body pain doesn't like ruin her ability to, you know, exist. And like she is also a huge advocate for mental health. I'm so grateful that there is somebody like that in the world that is advocating for mental health. For some reason, I have put so many rules on myself about what I can and can't do and who I am and am not allowed to be. And the idea of just going for it, like even with like putting on a piece of clothing for me is so terrifying. That fear of ups of upsetting somebody else or the fear of being perceived in a way that I don't want to be perceived in or somebody thinking that I'm something that I'm not has driven my existence for so long. And I'm curious if you, if there was ever a point in your life where you were concerned about what other people were thinking, is there a story there that you can share with us about how that felt and how, what helped you get through it? I never think about what other people are doing, not to be like self-centered, but like, I just, there's so much going on up here 
this, the chaos in my mind is, is so much that uh, the idea that I would care about what someone else is wearing, like someone else's fashion choice, what, you know, a like or dislike it, it I don't. And they, uh, and I'm like, they don't care about me. They're busy. They have, they have their own chaos in their mind to deal with, you know? I mean, there's definitely been times when people have tried to put me down because of what I'm wearing. I don't think I have always had very high self-esteem. Uh, I, I think for a really long time I had very low self-esteem, but I always just kind of did it anyway. But but then, of course, like I would be bullied <laughs> relentlessly because of the way I was dressing or acting or the way, I, you know, I'm a redhead and for some reason that's wrong. So I, de- I dealt with that. I think because... Part of it was just getting bullied for things that, like, I couldn't change, like, my face and my hair and my body. I was like, I can't do anything about this. Like, I'm stuck this way. So I'm just going to – I just have to keep going because I can't change it. It definitely got to me at the time. But it's okay to feel upset. I mean, it's not okay, obviously, for anyone to put anyone else down. But it's okay to feel bad and to process those feelings. After being sad – I could look at it and be like, that person is just going through their own thing, you know? Like, they're they're just projecting their shit onto me. And it's not my responsibility to take care of them. And it's not my responsibility to make them feel better. Like, when someone makes fun of me now, I used to always kind of, like, if someone would say something like, like, oh, the circus is in town. I'm just like, it is. It is, and I'm here. I can't even begin to explain how amazing that is. I know it's to you, you're like, it's just me. But like, as somebody who like, if somebody was like, you're terrible, I would be like, you're right. And just like completely break down. <laughs> like, but you're not. I would love to join your circus and let people know that the circus is in town when I am around too. Yeah, I've I've, I've definitely heard circus related things a lot, a clown re- well, clown related things without people knowing my dark clown past. Which is so funny because like you should just be like fun fact, like <laughs> I am a clown. The joke is on you. I am a generational clown. <laughs> there are people that are like still, you know, out here trying to make other people miserable. I'm just like mental health support in my opinion is the only answer like talking more about these things and like being more open about the fact that like we need to care about people's mental well-being is the only answer because I feel like there are so many people that like have made fun of other people again because their own mental well-being is just not there like you can just you can just be happy you can just do what you want and be happy if you're not hurting anyone like you can just do it are you comfortable with sharing a little bit more about how you got to that place of body self-love? So my little brother died a few years ago and um, I was living across the country when it happened. So my mom was in New York, my brother was in Florida and I was in California. It was pretty horrible to be separated from not only my temporary home of Florida and then like my real home of New York and like my family was split in all these different places. And in California, I was in a really abusive relationship as well, which didn't help. I just hated myself so much. I was in so much pain because of what was happening. Um, and I was in a hole. I was like drinking a lot. Like I was barely eating. Um, and then after my brother died, I, left my partner at the time, um, and moved back to New York and basically just took care of my mom, um, because she, because she couldn't handle everything that was going on. It hurt me so much to see her in pain that I couldn't really watch her be in pain because of me. And that kind of turned around my own body image. Like a way to get her out of bed was to ask her to make me food and it just kept working and I was like I can't also die (laughs) like sorry I was like I can't die too I can't let her I can't let her lose another child um even if it's not to be morbid but I can't let I can't let her go through this again so I just started taking care of myself better 
that's basically how it started. I was like, if this helps, then great. And then it just ended up helping me too. I spend a lot of time. I mean, I think everyone spends a lot of time like looking in the mirror and just like looking in the mirror and being like, there you are. Seeing yourself and holding yourself in your body as you are is so important to relate to yourself. My fashion is kind of tied into my body image, I guess, because I've gone through a lot with my body image. To me, it's really important to feel comfortable. So like I like I don't I won't wear clothes that aren't comfortable to look at yourself and be comforted is is what I want. Yeah. Sometimes it does take someone you love to show you that you're not loving yourself, if that makes sense. No, that's absolutely what it was. And I and I was, you know, being across the country from every single person I knew was not helping um, me be able to know myself and take care of myself the way that I should have been. I, that's why I think it's so important to make connection with people and just always, like, surround yourself with people that you trust and that you love because they're the ones that can remind you of yourself when you forget. I want to thank you for sharing that that was something that you dealt with and that, like, because I know that there is somebody out there who is dealing with it too. Sometimes, again, when you're in when you're in the thick of those really difficult times in your life, sometimes you can't, like, see two feet in front of you to somebody that you love or that somebody or somebody who cares about you. And it's so true that like the people around you who truly care about you are the ones who like remind you of who you are and like pull you out of like that self-deprecating sadness that like so many people I think can identify with feeling like, you know, sometimes on a daily basis. Making the choice to say I need to go and be with my family, like that's a very important choice that you made that, you know, was for your family. But how great is it that it also helped you? You know, your family really seemed to be there for you with that in like every sense of the word. And, you know, for those out there who don't maybe don't have a biological family, like their like chosen family is just as important. Like I have some friends that I am like super close with that like I've known my entire life and are definitely like brothers and sisters to me. So funny that you say that because I've been talking lately about like friendships and how you like sometimes think that you have a friendship with someone that is like completely like 50 50 the same. And then you slowly realize that it's different and that friend like is still existing there. And you're just like, we're not the same anymore. (laughs) I actually have a lot of times in my life where I'm friends with somebody and I'm like, oh yeah, like we're like, everything's cool. And then I'm like, I've done a lot of emotional work here and they've done none. And that's not fair. Like that's really not fair at all. No, it's not fair. And it's it's not fair because because it's supposed to be 50-50. You're supposed to be having a beautiful, loving, you know, reciprocal relationship with each other. And I think that definitely friendships are like romantic relationships as well. Like they should be nurtured just the same. I think it's just like everything is about community and connection. And I think that expressing yourself is the best way to contribute to the community. It's the best way to be yourself. Like, being yourself is the best thing to be, you know? I love that. I'm smiling so much right now. I think one of the things I've learned from talking to you is, like, it can be simple when you allow yourself to allow it to be simple. And it doesn't always, it's not always simple, but that's okay, too. I have... Not to be like, poor me, but like, I feel like I've struggled a lot and it's nice to just not struggle. It's nice to just be able to relax. It is truly all in your head. Luckily, we have therapists who are able to help us decipher all those things that are in our head because sometimes it's too much and a therapist is able to to help you figure all that out. I'm, I feel like Every episode, I'm like, therapy, because, like, why wouldn't I? No, same. same. Every time someone's like, I feel like I have no one to talk to, I'm like, have you heard of therapy? And can I direct you to a therapist? What's your insurance? Let me help you. Like, let, let's let do it, because uh, 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 without the therapist that I've had in the past few years and, like, the medication that I'm on currently, I, I mean, who knows where I'd be? Who knows? Exactly. How you share yourself with others online and 
give people a place to speak and hear them. Like that is something that I know there are so many people who, you know, see you on the internet or speak to you are so grateful for. And I'm super grateful for the fact that you virtually came here and talked with me today because you're so kind and you're so much joy and I'm just so grateful for you. It was so wonderful to hang out. You're so great. I'm so glad that we got to do this at last. Thank you all so much for listening. I hope that you got something out of this episode, whether it be a little courage and confidence to find what makes you feel most authentically you, woo, 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 or a good reminder that sometimes it's all about slowing down and getting out of your own way, something I'm still working pretty hard on, but glad to know that I'm not alone in it. And as always, we encourage you to have conversations like these with the people in your life. The more conversations like these we have, the less we feel so alone trying to figure out life and the closer we feel to those that we love. Don't let anyone convince you that you shouldn't talk about your feelings. They are valid and they are important and sharing your feelings might help another person have the courage to share theirs. I felt that way with Kyle. I cherish this conversation so much because they are not only so generous in all that they shared with me, but they just really made me feel like I was talking to a friend and we are friends now and I'm so grateful for that. And this conversation is a true example of something I firmly believe in, which is the idea that you can talk about mental health in any way and on any day. It all matters all the time. Lady Gaga, tough experiences. They don't have to live separately. And I love that Kyle helped show that and that self-expression is just so important for being yourself. And I'm so grateful. How many times can I say it? A million, because I am just so happy that I got to talk to Kyle. Thank you so much, Kyle. If you want to stay up to date with episode releases and see cute pictures of cats, you can follow us over on Instagram and Twitter at Who Knows Pod. We are also on Facebook at Who Knows. And we feature pets and plants on our Instagram story every day that we release a new episode. So if you want to send us a picture of your pet or your plant, please do it. We would love to share those. Send us over on Instagram or you can email it to us. And you can visit our website at whoknowspod.com. And if you want to send us any questions, we can answer them on the show. We can. This is where you can send plants as well and pets. Taylor at whoknowspod.com. That's the one. Send it all there. Instagram, email. That You'll catch me, catch me on the internet. How about that? <laughs> If you'd like to show support for the show, there are so many ways to do so, and two of the best ones are to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or join our Patreon or do both. Both of those things help us grow in so many ways and help make the show better and better and better. So do it. It would really mean a lot to me, and I will give you a shout out on the show, which I love to do, and a giant hug if I ever see you in person. All right, this is the end, and I have to do it because we've talked about it. I'm sorry. Will anyone even get this? I don't even know if anyone knows the song, but be yourself is all that you can do. If anyone emails me with the artist of that song, I will send you a free button and a sticker. Anyway, that's the end of the show. As always, who knows who's out there, but I love you and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to me sing. Yeah. This episode was hosted and edited by me, Taylor Dankovich. Our music is written and performed by the Isaac Kyloff Project. Jeffrey Bezos, Jeffrey Bezos, Jeffrey Bezos. You're a clown.